Inland Talk Express, KCAA, Loma Linda, 1050 AM, the station that leaves no listener behind. Hello, hello, hello. Make, welcome to the International Wealth Builders Radio Talk Show. This is Michelle Estelle. I am your host. I am the home buyer coach. And today we are going to talk about putting together a strong offer when buying real estate. And the key things that we're going to discuss is how to choose a real estate agent, how to choose a loan officer or lending company, and then some of the key elements of the residential purchase agreement and what things you might pay attention to when making an offer and what little additional things you can do to make a strong offer. So we're going to start out with choosing a real estate agent. Now there are many real estate agents available and things like um, clicking with them, personality, um, trust, um, those are very important. Um, but I think the thing to consider the most is do they work in your area? Have they closed a lot of transactions in your area or in your surrounding area? Some people choose maybe uh, someone that they already know, but they haven't worked in your particular area. And although that doesn't mean that they aren't a great agent for you, um, it could affect the way that the decision to make the offer would be considered in the sense that they might not know the market and know um, what would be a fair and competitive offer to make. Um, they still will have the skill to research that, but it does make a difference if you are in your current market where you've already sold properties, um, represented buyers in that market or represented sellers in that market and have an idea uh, very recently as to what the temperature of that market is and what the prices of the homes are in particular areas. So that is very important. Um, longevity in the business gives them the ability to know more negotiation skills and recognize when things come up that they already have dealt with that and they will have solutions to that. Also, they would be familiar with potential um, tax assessments in the area or um, other local things in the area that would, might be of interest to you. Um, and if you're from the area, you might know those things as well. Um, the other thing is uh, the newness in the business um, and maybe even the newness with their particular broker. So um, first you do want to find somebody who you do feel comfortable with, but secondarily you want them to have a knowledge of the market that you're in and the prices of those homes and maybe the things that could come up in that particular area that they're aware of. So this is always very important. Uh, the second thing is choosing a financial institution, a lender, a loan officer. Now, I know what's very important to all of us is the fees and the rates, but if you choose a lender only based on their fees and their rates, you may be very disappointed in this transaction. Um, what you would like to look for is someone who does have competitive fees, competitive rates, and a length of time in the industry who will know, once again, some of the red flags and some of the things that may come up in your financing, will have a knowledge of all of the programs that are available, and potentially a relationship with the uh, real estate agent that you selected because that knowledge and working as a team becomes highly effective overall and it puts together a great team working for you. Um, sometimes when you look at fee estimates and you're only selecting your lender based off of what you see on the bottom line, it can be very distracting and very um, dis misleading as far as the distraction comes when you have so many numbers and you've been uh, looking at so many different lenders and then you won't be able to remember what's what and you also have to um, take into consideration that most of the fees are third-party fees on an initial disclosure. And that, that means before the service providers have been selected, that initials fee statement um, 
is a very strong estimate of what those fees might be in the area, but are not the actual fees of the service provider because we don't know who that is yet. Um, when you make an offer, the ability to select the service uh, providers is in your offer. However, it's customary in the state of California for the seller to select the service provider. So in still, until you find a property and get into contract and escrow is opened, you won't know who that is or what their fees are. So in comparing a bottom line, it can be very misleading and not what you end up in with in the end, as well as the fact that if the lender is unfamiliar with taxes or assessments in the particular market that you're looking in, they could underestimate your payment by a significant amount. So you might look and see this lender has a higher payment, this lender has a lower payment, I'll go with a lower payment, but what you haven't looked at is what's making that payment lower. If it is the interest rate, then of course you're going to compare those interest rates, but it also could be the way that insurance and taxes have been calculated. So it's best to look at what the principal and interest is because that would compare the calculation of the primary things in a mortgage payment, which would be the loan amount and the interest rate. If the loan amount and the interest rate are the same, that payment would be the same. And it would be the same no matter what they've estimated for taxes and insurance, because in the end, the property's taxes and insurance are going to be discovered and utilized for calculating your payment. But when they do the estimate, they don't know what those numbers are because they don't have a property address. You haven't selected a property yet. Um, you may give them the opportunity to run a payment on a particular property. And then it also would depend on whether they've done their due diligence. Did they just estimate what the taxes might be? Or did they actually pull up the tax rolls and calculate what the taxes are to give you the appropriate payment? And have they reviewed what those assessments are? Sometimes there's temporary assessments such as um, a solar attached to taxes, and we would know that that would be paid off. So the taxes won't be that high. And in other cases, taxes are based on the new assessed value. Some of them are fixed, some of them are percentages, and your ad valorem, which is your base tax, is going to be um, based on the new sales price. So now that you've selected your real estate agent and you've selected your lender, and you reviewed an initial fee statement, having an additional conversation with your lender in order to establish the rapport and to get to know them and to know that you trust them and feel comfortable with them as a person and not as the numbers that they've provided to you. Because again, getting a great rate and great fees is all of our goal, but you want someone who is going to explain this transaction from beginning to end and who is going to take you through every step of the way, answer all of your questions thoroughly, and is always going to be concerned with you having the understanding of what the process is going to look like and what your ultimate cash to close is going to be and what your ultimate payment is going to be and how all of the people involved in a real estate purchase um, come into play. And there's many because you will be dealing with the real estate agent you selected, the loan officer you selected, the team of that loan officer, as well as the seller and the seller's agent and your escrow officer and a title rep, and particularly many others such as a um, inspector, home inspection, um, and the appraiser who you won't deal with directly, but will be part of this transaction as well and a key part. So um, these are all the things that you start out with in setting yourself up for success to make an offer that is strong and potentially would be accepted. In the next segment, we are going to talk more about how competitive the market is and how some people may have been waiting for this market to crash or for prices to go down and for rates to go down. And as you can see, sometimes uh, it's not what you think. And we are currently in a market that obviously is not moving upward as quickly as it was before, but there is still very high sales prices, purchase prices, appraised values in most markets because there is a shortage of properties 
in relationship to the number of buyers who are in the market. And that is your basic economics 101 of supply and demand. The less of the product that everybody wants exists, then the higher the prices can be or the more competitive in a negotiation standpoint that it would be and the stronger your offer would need to be in competing in that environment. All real estate markets are different. Um, and that could be from your local neighborhood to a city, to a community, to a um, county, and to a state. Where there is supply, you might have a little bit better time getting your offer accepted. But where there is huge demand, it will be very competitive and you need to be prepared and know some of the things that you can do in order to make your offer stronger. And so in the next segment, we will review just that. So again, um, thank you for joining us here on the International Wealth Builders Radio Talk Show. I'm your host, Michelle Estelle, the Home Buyer Coach, and we'll see you in the next segment. Looking to attract your target market without soliciting or doing the cold calling? Call Marie Waite and book your consultation. Branding gives you the power to create a unique and classy perception of your business for your target audience. A marketing plan without the right branding will always cost more, take longer, and tend to deliver subpar results compared to a well-branded business. Marie Waite is a branding strategist who formulates effective marketing and media programs to promote your business in building your name, brand, and legacy. Marie has over 10 years of experience and a proven record of creating strong brand content for business owners, entrepreneurs, and companies using her creative ideas, recommendations, and innovative programs. Book now at MarieWaite.com or call her at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate business and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. Fire Up Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects. As well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. Fire Up Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. Fire Up Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Estate. Men of Real Estate Radio Show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station KCAA Radio.com. Listening to Fabulous Lifestyle Radio. I am your host, Ricky Perry, and we are affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and Sports, where we broadcast over 5 million households in the greater Los Angeles area. If you missed our previous shows, you can watch us on our streaming networks on Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and the Android app. Looking to attract your target market without soliciting or doing the cold calling? Call Marie Waite and book your consultation. Branding gives you the power to create a unique and classy perception of your business for your target audience. A marketing plan without the right branding will always cost more, take longer, and tend to deliver subpar results compared to a well-branded business. Marie Waite is a branding strategist who formulates effective marketing and media programs to promote your business in building your name, brand, and legacy. Marie has over 10 years of experience and a proven record of creating strong brand content for business owners, entrepreneurs, and companies using her creative ideas, recommendations, and innovative programs. 
Book now at murrayweight.com or call her at 951-378-5316, 951-378-5316. Hello and welcome to the International Wealth Builders Radio Talk Show. I am your host, Michelle Estelle, the homebuyer coach, and today we are discussing how to make a strong offer. In the previous segment, we talked about how to choose a real estate agent to represent you, how to choose a lending company to represent you, and some of the key things to look for in those selections. And in this segment, we're going to talk more about making the offer. So your real estate agent is going to put together an offer, which is going to include the price that you're offering and the financing that you're using and some key things about what you are asking for in the offer, such as the contingency periods. Contingencies are time periods that you have in order to do due diligence around a specific thing. And for instance, there is a loan contingency, there is an appraisal contingency, and there's some document contingencies where you have the opportunity to, number one, um, get financing and ha make sure that it's in place fully and you are fully approved and you have a certain amount of time to do that. You have a certain amount of time to make an application and to get a loan approval. And then once that period passes, that contingency needs to be removed, which indicates that you've done your due diligence in that area. Same thing with the appraisal. It is once the appraisal's in and you've gone through the number of days of contingency to review your appraisal, then you um, would remove that contingency. These contingencies protect your earnest money deposit, meaning that it's a time frame that you could cancel if you discovered something about that property, your financing or the value of that property or particular details about that property. For instance, maybe it was on the MLS as a 3,000 square foot home and the appraisal says it's only a 2,700 square foot home. You, you, could, you could look at that. It also will say things about um, utilities and the type of materials used um, and the cost to rebuild that property. And then of course the value, which is what we're all um, looking for. But there's other details in the appraisal that you might wanna review and you might discover was something that you didn't know that would be something you would not desire for the property. And then there are documents to review. In some cases, there are um, CCNRs, covenants, conditions, and restrictions, and that might affect your lifestyle or what you can do to your home. And you would want to review those during the contingency period um, to be sure that everything is satisfactory to you. Otherwise, during those contingency periods, you are protected where your, your earnest money deposit is not at risk because if you discovered something and decided to move on from that property, you would get your full deposit back. If you do pass those contingency periods, you will risk losing the amount of money that you put down to open escrow, which is called the earnest money deposit. Um, also in your offer are sections where it says who will do what. In particular, there is a section who says who will pay um, which fees and in that section is also where selecting the service provider can be negotiated, which I spoke about in the last segment. So it is customary in the state of California for the seller to select the providers, but on the offer, you could indicate that you would like the service provider, the escrow, to be a particular escrow officer or company. Um, if the seller accepts that, then you can move on opening escrow on your side as the buyer with the company that you chose. But in many cases, the seller will counter back for the, the service provider to be a specific company who they've already chosen and particularly have already reviewed some documents from and maybe even a net sheet. So the seller can counter that and it can continue to be a point of negotiation, but generally speaking, um, in California, the seller will ultimately choose the service provider. And if they don't want to negotiate that point, they would let you know in a counter offer. Um, the other is who will pay the fees. 
of the third party. There are some customary ways that this is divided. For escrow, it's usually each to pay your own. And for title, it is for the buyer to pay the Alta policy or the lender's policy and the seller to pay the owner's policy. However, if you wanted to make a stronger offer, and this is one of our key things that you can do, is you can offer to also pay the owner's policy. Um, the second thing the seller pays is generally the HOA transfer fees and the county, city um, tax uh, transfer fees that you also could write in your offer for you to pay. If you have the money to do that, it helps the seller because the fewer fees that they have to pay, then the more they net. So you offer them um, the offer price or maybe slightly less or slightly more, but then at, uh, allow yourself or um, volunteer <laughs> as it would be to pay the additional fees, which helps the seller. So that's one thing that could make your offer just a little stronger. Um, the other part of the um, purchase agreement and your offer is which type of inspections you would ask for, which may be um, a termite inspection. Um, if there's septic, you might ask for a septic inspection and a well inspection. Now, all of those things um, would be really good to have and uh, and I think important that you ask for them. Sometimes the lender type of product that you selected will require that you have a termite report, a cell inspect, uh, well inspection and a septic inspection, and you won't have a choice and you will have to write them in the contract asking for them, but you also could offer to pay for them or customary is to have the seller to pay for them. Then there's repairs that may come out of those inspections and in the offer may indicate that the seller would pay or the buyer would pay. Again, customary for the seller to pay for the repairs on the home that you're purchasing, but there can be some negotiation which could help make your offer stronger. Um, I'm just skimming over the top of those main things that are in the residential purchase agreement, but this is why you choose um, a very good and strong real estate agent so that they can review that purchase agreement with you and you'll know everything that you're making an offer regarding. Um, then as far as your lender, the levels of approvals that you would like to have is a full credit approval from an underwriter. Now the levels are to get a prequal, a pre-approval or an underwritten approval. Um, a pre-qualification sometimes could indicate that the lender only asked you questions and based the pre-approval or I'm sorry, the pre-qualification on your conversation and what you told them versus validating all of the information with documentation. So I suggest that you do not rush the lender that you chose and that you make sure that you provide them all of the documentation with regard to your circumstances for your employment, for your fixed income, such as social security or retirement pension, um, and the assets that you currently have so that they can discover if there's anything that needs to be addressed and they can calculate your income correctly. Now, you may say that you make a certain amount hourly or that you have a salary, and that may, may seem very straightforward and in some cases will be straightforward. However, in some cases, what you are contracted to earn hourly or on a salary may not be the amount that is supported by your income documentation because maybe you took a leave or maybe you've clocked out at a different time of your hourly and you think that I work 40 hours, but you clocked out at 39 hours and not know that that really does make a difference on how we calculate your income or you may have received promotions or um, increase pay increases, which in some cases we cannot utilize the entire amount of that raise or that promotion and we need further documentation. And it is far best for you to discover all of these things before you get into an escrow. So I don't, can, I don't consider um, a verbal application and a pre-qualification pre letter 
to be helpful to you in making a strong offer um, because that pre-approval, pre-qualification may not be worth the paper that it's written on if all of these things are not validated. So this is a, a highly important thing because your financing literally is the most critical part of this negotiation and this transaction. So having a full underwritten approval is the goal and having discovered any obstacles, hiccups well in advance so that you can address them so that you have a smooth closing. This is very critical and we'll discuss it a little bit more in the next segment, but this is why I always say don't just choose your lender based off of the uh, rate and the, and the fees which again is highly important, but is not all there is said about making an offer and going through the purchase of residential property um, without all the proper things in place. So I will see you in the next segment where we're gonna discuss more ways to make a strong and competitive offer. Looking to attract your target market without soliciting or doing the cold calling? Call Marie Waite and book your consultation. Branding gives you the power to create a unique and classy perception of your business for your target audience. A marketing plan without the right branding will always cost more, take longer, and tend to deliver subpar results compared to a well-branded business. Marie Waite is a branding strategist who formulates effective marketing and media programs to promote your business in building your name, brand, and legacy. Marie has over 10 years of experience and a proven record of creating strong brand content for business owners, entrepreneurs, and companies using her creative ideas, recommendations, and innovative programs. Book now at murrayweight.com or call her at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate, business, and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, EDUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. FireUp Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects. As well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. FireUp Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Estate. Men of Real Estate Radio Show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically, go to the radio station KCAA Radio.com. Listening to Fabulous Lifestyle Radio. I am your host, Ricky Perry, and we are affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and Sports, where we broadcast to over 5 million households in the greater Los Angeles area. If you missed our previous shows, you can watch us on our streaming networks on Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and the Android app. Looking to attract your target market without soliciting or doing the cold calling? Call Marie Waite and book your consultation. Branding gives you the power to create a unique and classy perception of your business for your target audience. A marketing plan without the right branding will always cost more, take longer, and tend to deliver subpar results compared to a well-branded business. Marie Waite is a branding strategist who formulates effective marketing and media programs to promote your business in building your name, brand, and legacy. 
Marie has over 10 years of experience and a proven record of creating strong brand content for business owners, entrepreneurs, and companies using her creative ideas, recommendations, and innovative programs. Book now at MarieWaite.com or call her at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. Hello, welcome back to the International Wealth Builders radio talk show. This is your host, Michelle Estelle. I am the homebuyer coach. And today we've been talking about making a strong offer. In the previous segments, we went over how to choose a real estate agent, how to choose a lender and loan officer, and uh, a little bit uh, about the residential purchase agreement, some of the things that are on the purchase agreement when you make an offer that you may be able to consider changing slightly and going against the customary way and maybe helping to um, pay for a few things that are normally customarily the seller's cost. Um, now what I would like to do is talk about general things in making an offer, which is um, how much are you going to offer? This is why I want you to choose a knowledgeable real estate agent to represent you because they really need to look at the market and see what is a fair and competitive offer. Oftentimes I have buyers who offer less than the asking price without really any rhyme or reason. Why do you want to offer less than the asking price? I think that most people think that that's how you start out a negotiation, but it doesn't do you any good if it is nowhere near what a fair and competitive offer would be, particularly in a competitive market. And over the last years, many people have been waiting for the next crash of the real estate market, waiting for prices to go down and waiting um, for interest rates to go down. Even when they were 2%, I had clients who were still wanting to know if it could be lower. So um, sometimes there's a price to pay for waiting. And some of us know now that it would have been better for us to buy then um, than now. But now is also the time to buy versus in the future when you don't know what the future holds, if it works for you, which was another one of my segments a while back. The best time to make an offer is when you are prepared and you can afford um, the home and you absolutely love the home and you will love making a life in that particular home. So um, making an offer under the asking price with no uh, guidance and, and no research is not going to be um, beneficial to you because in fact we haven't had a market crash and interest rates are a bit higher. Um, the market is still very competitive and although it is not increasing as quickly and as rapidly as it did in, in where we were a year and a half ago, two years, um, we still have prices uh, moving up and it depends on the market of course. And it also depends on the amount of homes that are for sale because we are talking about a basic economy, um, economics 101, which is that supply and demand. And right now we don't have the inventory for the amount of people who would like to purchase a home. And therefore you have a competitive market, which then can drive up the price of a particular home. So making an offer under the asking price for no reason is not going to help you. If, and we do still see this, if a seller is a bit too aggressive and has priced their home too high, then of course you're not gonna make an offer that is outside of what the value and competitiveness of that particular property is. So your realtor would do that research and discover whether or not you should make a, an offer over that price or under that price and still making it very competitive. Um, I always, talk to my buyers about the fact if they were a seller, they would price their home reasonably, you would think, and they would still want top dollar. So there's no sense in someone trying to sell their home for top dollar and then undercut the next purchase and making a, a lesser offer. Um, again, some sellers do not have a great listing agent, so they have not priced their home where it should be to sell on a, in a reasonable and, a, and competitive um, way. But also sometimes sellers don't listen to their real estate agents, nor do buyers. And if you're not going to take their advice, then you might have not uh, um, hired the correct real estate agent because that means you think that you know more than them or you don't trust their guidance. 
So it's a great idea to be able to trust the guidance of the people who you decide to work with and do what they say. If you're going to do what you want to say, what you want to do and not what they say, then um, that you might have not chose the right representation. Um, so as far as a buyer is concerned, um, knowing what the market is, what homes have sold in the market, um, more so than what you think the value is of that home in your eyes, um, is a good idea to do that research. And then to make a competitive offer, knowing that in most cases, there are going to be multiple offers. Now, one way that you can do that, if you think that the people who make an offer are also going to make reasonable offers, is to do something called an acceleration clause. Now, I'm starting with kind of the most aggressive one because uh, this is not used in all circumstances, but it could be very valuable for your offer, is to um, submit an offer at a price and then with along with an acceleration clause that says that your offer will be uh, 5000 over the highest offer they receive. And so this helps you to be competitive when you don't know what's being offered. But again, if someone makes a crazy high offer that's really outside of all of the realm of everything, then your offer would then end up being $5,000 over um, an unreasonable offer. So it is to be used um, in particular circumstances when you fully understand and have it written in a way that protects you. But that is a way to be competitive because not knowing what the competition is and knowing that you want to be the highest offer to get this property, the acceleration clause is great um, because literally it is just indicating that it'll be a certain amount over the highest offer. I've seen it written even $1 over the highest offer, which might not be compelling enough, but 1000 over the highest offer or 2000 or 5000 over the highest offer could be a, a great way to um, have your offer accepted. Um, then also, as we mentioned in the last segment, your financing on there, your pre-approval letter, pre-qualification letter is extremely important. In the last segment, I went over what a pre-qualification is and why I think that speeding into something and having your um, loan officer give you a letter without having thoroughly reviewed your documentation and even have putting your loan into the underwriter um, may not help you and could cause you a lot of bumps in the road. So I suggest always providing all of the documentation regarding your income and your assets to your lender, having your lender review that with you, see how they calculated your income and see what the maximum payment that you can afford so that when you make your offer, you're making an offer on a property that fits that criteria and the seller is seeing a strong, not only pre-qualification, but pre-approval letter that's been underwritten by an underwriter and that you've already addressed all of the bumps in the road and the obstacles that you might have. So your, your, the seller may be able to recognize that um, your offer is further along than some of the other offers that they've received. And if it's a reasonable offered price and it's packaged nicely, then your offer could be accepted. Um, the other thing in making a strong offer is to have the lender to call the listing agent and speak on your behalf about where your loan financing is and where what the process is in if it's been underwritten, um, if the documentation has been reviewed, if they have pulled your credit and understand fully the picture of your financial ability to purchase that home. This is very critical to a strong offer and it means a lot to the seller, particularly a seller who has strong representation and knows that just that pre-approval letter or pre-qualification letter or just a desktop underwriting or an automated underwriting um, doesn't really mean a lot if no one has reviewed the documentation to validate the information that has been input. Um, it's you know one thing to gather the information, but without the supporting documentation, we could find that it's not what it what we thought it was, and you do not want to be in that circum those circumstances. Obviously, it's easy to run a credit and to get that you make an hourly wage and that you work 40 hours. And if you've been at your job for 20 years and you always, always work 40 hours and everything, every calculation of your income comes out to support that, then 
easy peasy. But a lot of times an hourly person will have time off or docked time or did not take paid time off or clocked out at 30 minutes early. Um, and those things all change the way that we calculate the income and raises and increase in um, pay or promotions are also all looked at differently from the consumer because this is what I earn. This is my new salary. This is my new position. But if that increase is significant enough to where it doesn't match what you've previously earned, then a lot of additional documentation is needed to support that promotion or that raise and that these are things that you don't know as a as a borrower that your loan officer should know could be a concern to at least validate it not a concern that you could get approved but definitely a concern that if they haven't done that work that you get into underwriting you get close to closing and there's a lot of documentation that is still needed in order to support your the financing that you are offering with your offer to purchase so that is very important that you have a strong pre-approval when you're making an offer. This is also one of the key things to getting your offer accepted. So that wraps it up for this segment. In the next segment, we're gonna review all of this and maybe add a few little tidbits and I hope you join us then. Looking to attract your target market without soliciting or doing the cold calling? Call Marie Waite and book your consultation. Branding gives you the power to create a unique and classy perception of your business for your target audience. A marketing plan without the right branding will always cost more, take longer, and tend to deliver subpar results compared to a well-branded business. Marie Waite is a branding strategist who formulates effective marketing and media programs to promote your business in building your name, brand, and legacy. Marie has over 10 years of experience and a proven record of creating strong brand content for business owners, entrepreneurs, and companies using her creative ideas, recommendations, and innovative programs. Book now at murrayweight.com or call her at 951-378-5316. 951-378-5316. This is Steve Matley. Join me every Thursday at 3 p.m. right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio Talk Show. I spent decades as a professional construction manager, business owner, real estate developer, and a college educator, and I enjoy learning new things from other people. We talk a lot about real estate business and finance, but we cover a diverse range of other topics as well. Some of the topics we've discussed in the past few months include real estate investing, leadership, higher education, ADUs, marketing using technology, multifamily rental property, business strategy, entrepreneurship. You never know who may show up or what they may talk about. So join us right here on KCAA for Building Solid Foundations Radio. FireUp Connect is the most innovative business networking group. Supporting and collaborating with a dozen of small businesses that are interested in building and establishing strong business connections. Hosting educational live seminars while carrying out business and community driven projects. As well as marketing programs as a part of its membership program. FireUp Connect also offers virtual assistance with a wide range of services including inbound customer support, chat support, appointment setting and email management, graphic designing video editing, web design and development, social media marketing, e-commerce solution, content writing and much more. For more information, head on over to www.fireupconnect.com. FireUp Connect, helping success stories unfold every day. Real Estate. Men of Real Estate Radio Show here on KCAA. Oats mortgages can be purchased. All of us want to live in thriving communities. Basically go to the radio station KCAARadio.com. You're listening to Fabulous Lifestyle Radio. I'm your host, Ricky Perry, and we are affiliated with CNBC, NBC News, and Sports, where we broadcast over 5 million households in the greater Los Angeles area. If you missed our previous shows, you can watch us on our streaming networks on Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, and the Android app.
Looking to attract your target market without soliciting or doing the cold calling? Call Marie Waite and book your consultation. Branding gives you the power to create a unique and classy perception of your business for your target audience. A marketing plan without the right branding will always cost more, take longer, and tend to deliver subpar results compared to a well-branded business. Marie Waite is a branding strategist who formulates effective marketing and media programs to promote your business in building your name, brand, and legacy. Marie has over 10 years of experience and a proven record of creating strong brand content for business owners, entrepreneurs, and companies using her creative ideas, recommendations, and innovative programs. Book now at murrayweight.com or call her at 951-378-5316, 951-378-5316. Hello and welcome back to the International Wealth Builders Radio Talk Show. I am your host, Michelle Estelle, the homebuyer coach. And in the previous segments, we've been discussing how to make a strong offer. We have reviewed how to select a realtor, how to select a lender, um, and some of the tidbits on the residential purchase agreement that you can review um, to strengthen your offer. Uh, my main discussion in the previous segments were that when you select a real estate agent and a lender, that you are able to trust their advice. That doesn't mean uh, without any discussion or questions, there should be lots of discussion and lots of questions, but in the end, once you select them, you should be able to trust their advice. You've chosen them, chosen them to be your advisor. So if there isn't any trust in their expertise and their advice that they give you, then uh, you may have selected the wrong partners to work with. We have gone over the residential purchase agreement and looking at some of the selections in that offer that you can make that may help to lift your offer by paying for a few extra things that are customarily paid by the seller who, that by paying them, it just increases their um, proceeds, which as we mentioned, if you're the seller, you obviously want to get a great offer. So don't look at it from a buyer perspective. Try to look at from the seller perspective as well. Making a lowball offer trying to get a deal usually gets you nothing in most markets unless obviously the property is truly overpriced and this is where your qualified agent is going to help you to assess that. Um, so a few of the things that we talked about were the customary fees in California is um, selecting the service provider, um, each paying half of the escrow fee, uh, the seller generally paying for the owner's policy and the documentary transfer tax, and some transfer fees if there's HOA. So by offering to pay those, it may be, you know, in the thousands, um, low thousands that you may be deciding to to um, pay for the seller, but paying and offering the a reasonable sales price and picking up a few extra fees can make your offer a lot stronger. Um, the other things that make your offer stronger, just to summarize, is being well prepared with your financing and having already looked at all obstacles and any documentation that the underwriter might require for your specific situation. And making sure you have the time to get a solid pre-approval before you go out looking. This is going to largely change the experience that you have by being prepared and not having any last minute things that come up that derail the process of your loan closing. And that leads to one of the other things that sometimes help and that is shortening the contingencies and shortening the estimated close of escrow date. And when you can close very quickly, that is sometimes a benefit to the seller, sometimes not. Sometimes they aren't prepared to pack and move. So um, a shorter escrow isn't necessarily desirable to them. So knowing what motivates them there is important. But if you did offer a short closing so that they can quickly get closed and get their proceeds, um, then you're going to want to have a solid approval because there's certain things that you do not have control over the time. Um, there are a minimum number of days from the application to the closing that can, um, th that can pass, that, that are your right for your due diligence for your loan that cannot be shortened. So getting your initial disclosures and getting your 
cl final closing disclosure all have waiting periods within them. So the absolute shortest time that you can close any escrow would be 10 days if you were totally prepared otherwise. So um, not cutting yourself short or the seller short is important. Um, there's many other ways to make an offer strong besides taking away all of your ability to do your due diligence and rushing you through a closing process. Um, although it does help to stack some of these ideas and having a shorter escrow can be beneficial on top of a strong pre-approval. If you don't have a strong pre-approval and you offer a short closing, chances are you're going to blow through that date because things were undiscovered and conversations were not had about how the financing would work and maybe what important documentation will be needed throughout the process. So being well prepared is key and selecting advisors who you trust and that you will feel comfortable in accepting their advice about what price you should offer, um, what type of loan program you should have, um, what when to lock in your interest rate, um, how to proceed and what the next steps will be, how you're going to communicate, how you're going to provide your documentation, all of these things known upfront and setting a comfortable relationship going forward through this process is going to be key. Of course, um, the amount of the offer that you make should be reasonable and competitive as we discussed. There's no sense in lowballing a, a, a um, well-priced home. A high priced home is a different story, but soon that seller will discover with no offers or no one coming near that price that they would have to adjust their pricing. So um, sometimes sellers do not listen to their advisors and they price their homes too high. And eventually it needs to come, they'll come to that conclusion that it is priced outside the market. However, a reasonably priced home may go for more than it was listed for. And that is due to, to the competition. So your real estate advisor might tell you that this home is well-priced, but I believe that it'll sell for upwards of $20,000 more. So we need to make an aggressive offer. We need to pay for the um, owner's policy and potentially the transfer tax. And we need to have a short escrow and we need to have shorter contingencies and we need you to be fully approved. And we need your loan officer to call this selling the listing agent to let them know the details, not personal details, but the details of where you are in the process of your loan approval so that everything is, is in order when that seller reviews your offer. I hope this was helpful and thank you for joining us. This is Michelle Estelle, your home buyer coach. And if you ever have any questions, please reach out to me. I'd be happy to help you through the offer process and the pre-qualifying process or just to make the selections of who your advisors will be. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. KCAA and KCAA Internet Television.